What up you nerds, Fallout here, and today we're here to talk about Trials. It's been revamped, as I'm sure many of you know, and it's far more playable and accessible now than it's ever been. Last weekend saw a near record-breaking amount of players diving into the game type, and I had a ton of people asking me in my Twitch chat, follow me on Twitch, hey Fallout, what tips do you have for being better at Trials? I've got a bunch of tips for you today, and they're gonna fall into one of two buckets. Bucket number one, general Trials tips that apply to all players, and then bucket number two, tips if you're a solo queue player. Remember that with the latest change to Trials, you can actually solo queue if you want. So if you're a solo player, do not skip to the end of the video because many of the tips in bucket number one apply to you as well. If you only play with teammates, however, feel free to skip over the final part later on. Oh, hello. Got a quick question for you. Do you spend like a lot of time, I mean a lot of time, looking at screens all day? Yeah, I'm a professional YouTuber slash degenerate, but back when I had a nine to five job and when I went to school, I would just look at screens all day, day in, day out. Did you know that too many screens can cause eye strain, headaches, and even trouble falling asleep? That is due to blue light that is mainly emitted by screens, which can cause a lot of damage if you are overexposed. Enter GMG, your new shield against blue light. It helps you reduce eye strain and can help you battle the negative effects of long-term screen use. Great for anyone who works in front of a screen for multiple hours every day. Maintain your focus and fight off that awful headachey feeling caused by too much blue light exposure. Or if you just want to sit down and play a few Vigi games while looking like an intellectual. They fit pretty well and I like that they're regular, clear, normal glasses. They don't have that weird yellow tint vibe that I've seen floating around. For the next 48 hours only, you can get a pair for yourself at almost half the price. That is a big discount, boys, 40%. So don't miss out. Go right now and check out the link down low in the video description. All right, general trials tips. Tip number one, go full ham on your loadout. I mean, do absolutely everything you can to get ready for endgame PvP. Is your armor able to be masterworked? Do it. Have you squeezed every possible armor mod that you can possibly fit onto your loadout? There's literally no reason not to do it. Do it. The armor mods that I personally find essential, about nine times out of 10, weapon targeting mods on my helmet. For my gauntlet armor, either fast fall, a weapon reloader mod, or a weapon dexterity mod, shotgun dexterity is insanely good, and right now you can get it via your artifact for merely one energy. If you're a filthy shotgun ape like me, that mod should be borderline mandatory for you. For my chest armor, unflinching armor mods. They don't do a ton, but every little bit does help, and now is not the time to hold back. For leg armor, you can go with a scavenger mod or one of the brand new holster mods. I know, scavenger mods aren't as OP as they used to be, and special ammo doesn't transfer from one round to another, but being able to get even one more round in your shoddy sniper, fusion rifle, whatever, can mean the difference between winning and losing a match. Obviously, those mods aren't carved in stone. Sometimes I run dynamo on my helmet. Sometimes I don't run fastball in favor of something unique, like the new grenade kickstart mod. A lot of it will depend on your overall build, but whatever you do, make sure no space on your armor goes to waste. Tip number two, if you're queuing up with a team, try to have a balanced team loadout, meaning that if you happen to notice that you and your boys are all loading into trials with three sniper rifles and three scout rifles, something might be wrong. Ideally, you want to make sure you got answers for long, mid, and close range combat. If you're too focused on long range combat only, then a team of well-moving shotgunners can trample over you if they work well and manage to close the gap. If you're too focused on short range combat and don't work aggressively enough, other teams can purposefully play you at range and harass you while backpedaling. There will be exceptions to that rule. Teams of cracked gamers who snort advanced GG off the table in the morning for breakfast and do account recoveries all weekend every weekend while praying to not get the belt from Big Daddy Bungie can probably throw on any team loadout and do well. For those trying to learn and improve though, it's important to keep in mind. Tip number three, inspect the other team when you're loading in and figure out weaknesses. Just like I mentioned in tip number two, did you notice that the other team is using all close range weapons? Take advantage of that, come up with a game plan that keeps them at arm's length. Abuse weapons that perform well at mid-range, prepare to backpedal, and slap them around as they charge you. Other team got triple snipers? Maybe mentally prepare that you and the boys might need to do a little aping, as they all may hold hands and hard scope at the back of the map. I will always, always look for things on the other team that I can take advantage of. Is the other team using triple arc buddy stag warlock? Well, I guess it's time to dust off the risk runner SMG. If you're new, you won't be able to immediately learn what counters what but it's also important to know what to expect. If I see a lot of snipers on the enemy team, I know I gotta be careful when challenging lanes. If I see a lot of close range options,
options and no snipers, I know I can challenge lanes much more openly. Always pay attention to the enemy loadout and think about how it might affect you and your team's ability to play the game. Tip number four, if you're playing on a team, call everything out. Everything. Teams that play quietly lose. Fallout, I don't know what the official callouts of the map are. It doesn't matter. Make something up with your team. He's by the big red thing. Might be vague, but if your teammates know what it is you're referring to, who cares? I have ridiculous callouts with some of my friends for a lot of very common maps. There's a place on the map Distant Shore that me and my teammates call Bitch Rock. Is that Bungie certified official? Probably not, but my teammates know where it is and that's all that matters. If you're new to callouts, try working on the following. If you're killed by anything, call out what killed you, Titan, Warlock, or Hunter, how much health you left them with, and maybe what weapon they have. So you could say, Hunter on my body, very weak with a hand cannon out, or Titan on my body, full health, watch out, he's got a shotgun. Anything is better than playing quietly. Calling out is so important to winning, I really can't stress that enough. Tip number five, do not charge in alone. Again, at very high levels of play, you can see players frequently breaking this rule, and that's okay. Veteran players know when to break away for a flank, a pinch, a push, a collapse, whatever. I don't mean that you should be close enough to smell your buddy's breath. You could get grenaded, Lorenz drivered, or Hunter shatter dived, but you should very rarely find yourself way alone off on the other side of the map. Try to stay within a short range of your buddies. If the enemy team has all three enemy guardians alive and you blindly charge in against all three of them by yourself, well, you're probably gonna die. There's a time to charge and there's a time to be patient. Don't charge in by yourself if you don't have to, and especially if you're outnumbered. Tip number six, find lone players and collapse on them. Good players can win 1v1s. Great players don't have to. Team shooting is incredibly powerful in D2, and if you happen to look up at your radar and notice that one enemy is way off on their own, away from their two teammates, it is time to move. Call out to your teammates that there's a lone enemy, and ideally everyone should now refocus their attention on charging down that lone player. I've made this comparison before, but it's like how animals hunt in the wild. Think about lions and wolves, pack hunters. Do they try to smash through the front line and go for the toughest, biggest, hardest foe? No, they look for loners, they look for stragglers, and when they find one, it's a hundred times easier to bring one down. Same thing in trials. Any enemy off on their own should be targeted and brought down if possible. The next two tips are based off what happens when the first kill happens in trials. Tip number seven, did your team get the first kill? Play your advantage. At the beginning, of trials, both teams usually dance around each other for a little bit, trying to win the battle for first pick, i.e. getting the first kill of the round. If your team works together and manages to get the first kill, you now have to take advantage of that situation and quickly. Either one of two things will happen. Either the first kill of the game will be on an enemy who was way off on their own, or the enemy was killed while near their teammates. If the enemy was way alone, you can now regroup your team and defend the body. Your goal should be to prevent the other team from getting an easy revive, so don't necessarily necessarily camp the dead body, but set up nearby. Put your team between the dead enemy and the two remaining guardians. You now have a three to two life advantage and team shotting will become harder for them and easier for you. If the first enemy you killed was right smack in the middle of their teammates, you now have to be very careful. Odds are good that the other team may immediately try to play for the revive. Do whatever you can to not let that happen. If that means that you and your entire team now aggressively push hardcore together, so be it. You have a three to two body advantage, so even though it is possible to lose the push, the numbers are on your side. Put pressure on the other guardians immediately. Don't let them get a free revive and go on the attack. Tip number eight, did your team suffer the first death? Remember, you don't have to plant. Titan players will very, very frequently immediately rush to the aid of a dead teammate, eager to drop their Titan barricade down to try and grab the revive. If I'm playing a shatter dive hunter, my pants get tight when I see that happening in front of me. I've won way too many rounds on enemy teams that were far too eager to go for the immediate revive in bad situations because it is a natural knee-jerk response. I want you to remember the following word, rotate. Almost never a bad idea to do in trials. Did your teammate get picked first? Odds are the other team is gonna try to swoop in and clap you, so don't let them. Rotate, immediately move around the outside of the map. Change positions and move them around. They could camp your teammate's body or they could get desperate and follow you around the map. They could even get separated, leading to getting picked off one by one. Rotating 
is a great strategy for trying to spread the enemy team thin. Can you sometimes immediately get the revive on a dead teammate without any worry? Yeah, totally, but not every time. You can always come back for your teammate later if the other team is putting a ton of pressure on you now. Rotate, rotate, rotate. Tip number nine, if the enemy team is camping away from where the final zone will appear, just play the zone. This one can be hard for a lot of people because countering patient players with patient play can be pretty goddamn boring. Recently, I had a stream with Cool Guy where the enemy team was camping outside on Burning Shrine with a bunch of snipers. We had the inside map control though, which is where the final zone eventually would pop up. So we just hung out inside. When the timer got low, the other team even allowed us to drop a Titan bubble right on where the zone would pop up. They showed up into chat mad that we wouldn't push, but the truth is that we had the map control. The ones who needed to push was them. Why would we abandon the spot where the zone would pop up to beeline straight into a triple heart scope? They needed to push, they didn't, we held our ground, and they lost. Playing patiently can be brutal, but if you have the map control, especially late in a round, you don't need to leave it. Tip number 10, unless you're about to lose the game, never pop your super in a 1v3. I cannot tell you how many trials games I've seen go bad because someone has broken rule number 10. Can you pop your super and get a triple kill? Of course. Are you likely to in a 1v3? Not very. If you're about to lose the game though, naturally you gotta do it. That super ain't coming with you to orbit. But if you've got more rounds ahead, for the love of God, man, don't throw that super away. Even if you end up losing the round, it's fine. At the start of the next round, now you can try to pop your super and you'll have two living teammates who can both A, back you up, and B, collect orbs of power to help fuel their supers. Yeah, you can try to be a hero, but if you lose, which again, very doable in a 1v3, you'll be throwing a huge asset directly into the trap. If I'm in a 1v3, I'll try to get a kill while rotating around the map. And if I do, depending on the scenario, maybe I'll pop my super then. A 1v2 in your super is way more winnable than a 1v3. And you can also rotate towards your teammates. Then if you get a pick, you can pop your super and maybe get a teammate revived together. Bottom line, unless you are going to lose the game, don't pop your super in a 1v3. Tip number 11, pop supers early. If you're running a high intellect build and you happen to notice that, hey, you got the first super on the field, take advantage of it and pop that son of a bitch. The longer you wait, the more super energy you're going to allow the enemy team to get. And if they get that super energy while you twiddle your thumbs, they're going to get their super and now they're going to be much harder to take down. They could counter super you, especially with the number of devastating counter supers in the game, like the newly buffed Landfall Stormcaller Warlock. Take advantage of the fact that you got your super before they did and try to make a play with it before they're able to counter you. All right, now we've made it into bucket two, tips that only apply to players who are queuing up solo. These tips might be a little bit more broad, a little bit more theoretical, but I think they're good. So here we go. Solo player tip number one, adjust your mentality. If you've been watching organized teams on Twitch for a long time, or if you've played a lot of teams yourself and you're changing over to solo queue, now is the time to rewire your mentality. Solo queuing in trials will be a big challenge. Is it possible to go flawless? Yeah, but it shouldn't be your immediate expectation. You lack one of the most powerful tools of doing well in trials, being able to communicate quickly with your team. On top of that, the teammates you'll be given are going to be a complete dice roll. They could pop off and be cracked, or more than likely, they'll just be folks looking to roll in for some casual play and non-adept loot. When I play solos, I make my goal to try out new loadouts, work on good positioning, and just overall PvP practice. Again, you can go in with that hardcore, I'm going to go all the way mindset. Just keep in mind, it's going to be a big challenge and many things, including your teammates, are going to be way out of your control. So don't get frustrated if things are very hard, even if you're playing well. Solo play tip number two, watch where your teammates go. Because drifting off all alone can be the catalyst to failure in trials, you wanna make sure that you and your RNG teammates aren't too far away from one another. When the round starts, keep a tight eye on your radar and keep track of where your teammates are going. If you can, try to stay near them so you can more easily team shot when you find enemies. If your teammates immediately split up. Not a lot you can do about that. It's out of your control. So just pick one teammate and try to shadow them for a little bit so the entire team doesn't get picked apart one by one. Solo play tip number three. If your teammates are following tip number two and hesitating at the beginning of the round to watch which direction you go, well, time to become a leader. Do your best to lead the early round flow. Pick a direction and stick to it. Be sure to keep watching your radar though. While your teammates might follow you like a motherly hen early in the round, they may eventually decide to break 
break off for a different angle. And if they do, you may have been left alone without even realizing it. Be a leader, but be prepared to backtrack and rejoin your flock if they venture off. Tip number four, and this might be the most important tip for solo queue players I can give. If you find good teammates, party the f up. Now that solo players are queuing into trials, so many people out there are looking for a team. And good teamwork is hard to find. You can literally view new trials as a free tryout simulator for new teammates. If you find a couple blueberries who are really popping off, there's literally no better time to send a GG and maybe a friend request. As mentioned earlier, yeah, you can go flawless in trials solo, but that's more of a personal challenge. The far easier method of reaching the mountaintop is to keep practicing and honing your skills in solo queue until you find and build a new team from the ground up. You're literally out there in an ocean of solo queue players who may very well have the same end goal that you do. Find ones that you mesh well with and team up. TLDR, solo is for practice, casual loot earning, and personal challenge mode. But if you really want to go end game flawless, solo is the best place to find teammates that work well with you. If you have any extra tips of your own, I would love to hear them. Hit me with your thoughts and ideas down below in the comment section. If you liked today's video, let me know by hitting the like button. And if you're new around these parts, don't forget to click subscribe because it really helps my channel out. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.